Goodwin. I'm an agricultural economist at the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture. And we're here between Summers and Cincinnati, Arkansas at the baling operation for White River Fertilizer. Tracy Argo with White River Fertilizer is here with us. Uh, why bales? You can haul it on flatbed trucks instead of specialized vehicles. Uh, that way you can get back hauls, hopefully, to cut the cost down. Uh, you don't have to have storage, uh, covered storage at the, at the delivery site. The farmers there, because they're limited on labor and the soil conditions of when they can put actually poultry litter on their fields, this gives them a, a way to do it whenever they're ready because the litter's yeah. right there. Uh, what we've got here today, this is turkey litter and it's testing really good. The way it got here is we have a clean out contractor who searches out the houses for us, does some analysis. Uh, if it meets our quality control criteria, then we purchase it and bring it here to the baling site. Uh, it takes us a little bit of legwork to get the right stuff, but we want to maintain a good quality of litter. Uh, once it gets here, then we'll process it through the baler and bale it up. It's pretty unique. Well, let, me, let me ask you a couple questions. I noticed the litter looks different at the top than it does here at the bottom. Uh, and I understand this is what's called D-cake. Uh, the D-cake, that is higher moisture content. It's really good in nutrients. The nutrient is a lot higher in that one. The total clean out, it's got a lot more rice holes in it. Uh, the moisture's less. That's kind of the color differences. This D-cake is about 10% more moisture than the total clean out back there behind it. That's a lot lighter on top there yeah. behind that. And mostly that's the moisture content. Plus the total clean out back there has got a lot more rice holes in it than the D cake. The D cake is primarily the top two inches between flocks. Okay. They take that out and then they put some more shavings in there. And we think it's a lot better. It tests a lot better. Good. Tell us a little bit about uh, actually how the conveyance system works and, and sort of what happens up there. I see there's a white uh, apparatus there and, and here's a front end loader. Mm -hmm. I'm a, tell us how that works. Okay. What happens is this conveyor is tied to the baler. It's automatic. When you want to make a bale, you hit the automatic button, the conveyor starts. The white thing that you're looking at, that's to add moisture if we need to add some moisture. Uh, the baler runs best about 30, 32 percent moisture. Some of the litter we get is 20, 22. So we add some moisture to it to help with the compaction process. Okay. When this starts running, the operator on the bobcat, he'll scoop up some litter and he'll try to keep up with the machine. Well, right now the machine's a little bit faster than the bobcat. <laughs> uh, we may go up a bigger size and that'll help that. But that's kind of this end of it right here. It's, it's a one-man operation over here. Okay. He maintains all this area. Okay. <clears throat> all together, there's four men on the machine. Two operators, a floater, and a panel operator. So labor-wise, it's, it's not very labor-intensive. Four guys. Uh, the, the process, once it comes up the conveyor, it drops into a hopper up there. You can see this large black chamber there. And it has a ram on this side, a backup ram, and it has a primary ram on that side. Right now we've got that cycle time set at three seconds. So every three seconds, as that hopper's filling, that large ram cycles. And when it does, about 200 pounds of litter falls in there. And how big is a bale when it comes out? Uh, when the bale comes out, it's 42 inches long and about 46 inches around wrapped and then it exits the machine right here. Okay. And then the offload operator takes it outside to the storage containment area. Okay, so that's your fourth. That's the fourth that's man. That's the fourth man. Yeah. Have there been any uh, particular peculiar issues with the bales? I know people are always talking about, you know, maybe different problems and they don't understand really what happens inside the bale. I think that the biggest misconception is that that bale will heat up and combust inside itself. That's not the case. Once that litter goes into the bale, the temperature elevates for a five day period, peaks out at about 108 degrees, and then returns to ambient temperature. I guess it runs out of oxygen. If it's wrapped in plastic, it gets to a certain level and then 
shuts down. Okay, so Tracy, after the bales are made, they come out, you offload them, and then when they get to the farm, they're gonna have some way for the farmer to handle these things because they weigh, what do you say, about 3,000 pounds? Yes, sir. So uh, this looks like uh, some kind of apparatus. Tell me about the, the, this bale handler and how a farmer might use it on their operation. This is our bale handler. Uh, it has a pivot point up there where it spreads apart. You gather the bale up and squeeze into it and it lifts it up. We can custom install these on anything. Well, let's go look at a bale. Okay. Uh, there's a, several of them over here. It <clears throat> uh, looks like they're stacked up pretty nice. I see you've got some kind of a protective berm around here, I suppose, in case any of them have a problem. Yes, this but, is a, a, an experiment spot that we've got. We're testing several kinds of plastic. Uh, we've, what we've found with this clear plastic, and this is a bonded plastic, it's not as good as a blown plastic. And this plastic here doesn't have very much UVI inhibitor in it. Uh, we found that we need at least a year of UVI prohibitor. Uh, some of these deteriorated way faster than we anticipated when we first started doing these experiments. And now we've just finally decided that we're going to have to use a white plastic to give us a reflection. You can see how bright these are in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And they're also a little bit warm, but it doesn't even feel like it's higher than body temperature. But it does deteriorate a little faster, so we've had to go to a stronger, more agriculturally inclined plastic. Okay, now there's some of them over okay, here. Okay, let's go look at those. This bell, this bell here has been about eight months in the sunshine. Okay. So this is 150 gauge UVI prohibitor and it's fair and okay. We've had some major storms and it's set through the ice storm of 2009. Yeah. And this here's a good bell. Uh, the way these are handled, we have spike sleeves that fit over those slick bars that we just saw in the right, handler. Right, right. Well, when you come up here and you pick it up with the spikes, once you pick it up and cut it, it then will rip it apart and it falls into the so spreader. So those prongs reticulate or articulate or whatever out like this yes, and then sir. the litter falls in. And there's an, another bar, there's a third bar, much like a triangle if you envision that. And that third bar penetrates the bell about a third of the way down and it stabilizes and it catches the plastic. Uh -huh. So when you pick it up and put it over the spreader and you bust it open, the litter falls and that bar stabilizes it and catches the plastic. And so then you can just take the plastic and pile it up and recycle it if you choose or, or whatever. Uh -huh.